Hello, this is Learning Activity 2. Uh, we're going to be looking at converting a Java program into a C Sharp program to kind of experience and see the difference between Java and C Sharp uh, for this. Um, so we're going to work with a uh, program that's from the CIS 2087 course, uh, the Java 2 course. Uh, you may or may or not have had this, uh, but if you have it, it would be kind of useful. We're going to look at the uh, shape class with inheritance. Uh, so that's attached to this project. You can download it and open it up in NetBeans, um, or you can open it up uh, in uh, any sort of text editor like Notepad++ plus 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 or yeah plus 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 or something like that. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is um, open this attached file and again I've opened this up in NetBeans and so there's a set of, of Java classes here so we've got those set up or you know ready to go you just have to edit them and again they're in uh, the package source packages and in this uh, shape inheritance solution uh, folder so okay uh, next we're gonna create a new project in Visual Studio so run Visual Studio we're working with Visual Studio 2019 now so I've got that open. I don't have a project open now and so we're going to create a new project. Now later on we'll be doing more of these cloning repositories from GitHub but for this first um, couple units we won't be using GitHub yet. So we're just going to create a new project um, and we want to do a, a console project in C Sharp. So I want to switch the language just to C Sharp and there should be console app in C Sharp uh, here. Um, now, if you don't see this, if you just see like C++, you, uh, you may have to add uh, in uh, these other projects. And so you can talk to me about that, or there might be a link uh, to them here. But we just want this console app in uh, C Sharp. So I'm going to click on that, hit next, give it some name. Uh, so I'm just going to call this um, Shape Learning Activity 2. And again, I should pay attention. It's storing it in C users T given source repo, and you can change this if you want. I'm just going to leave that be. Uh, but eventually, I need to zip this up and submit this, so I should remember where it is. So it's not in the documents folder. It's in my T Gibbons folder, but in source repos uh, for that. Okay, so there's my name uh, for that, um, and I'm going to create uh, this. Okay, so here's Visual Studio. Uh, we have our menu at the top. It's a pretty common IDE. Uh, we've got our um, editing window here and then our Solution Explorer to our right. Now, sometimes we'll be popping up other windows, including the Toolbox window over here on the left. But for now, we, we don't need those because we're just doing a console app. Uh, there's the output window down at the bottom here and then the property windows over here. And again, we won't be using the property windows much because we won't be doing any uh, GUI uh, editing of a user interface right now. Okay, so it created a, uh, added this using here system and one of the libraries. It created a namespace uh, for us and then a program here and a main program uh, for this. Uh, and then it used as a console write line to print something out. So, okay, so let's go back uh, here. And so again, the next, the last step is to just create a new C sharp classes for each of the Java class in, in the original pro program and convert those. So let's start looking at those. Um, I'm going to start with this uh, shape tester class because that is a class uh, that has a main program just like that. So I'm going to open up the shape tester class. Now in this example over here we already have a a class called program here and so I'm just going to actually leave that be and it has a main in here and I'm just going to copy the main from this over there. So for now I'm just going to copy this main uh, here uh, over um, there. So copy it down to that. Um, yeah. Okay. And I'm going to paste. Now I'm going to leave this one here so I can just so you can see the two. So I've got that main. I'm going to paste in this other main down here. So and again, the way the mains are structured are a little different. Um, in Java, this is the C sharp original one here, and this was a Java one. Java ones had a static main, not up here. This main is capitalized, and then the way the st string is lowercase here, and the way the argument array is declared is a little different. The brackets is here instead of here. 
Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this one uh, here. Uh, and in fact, those parentheses. So I just have that uh, here. Um, now, um, there are some issues. I don't have a rectangle class or a triangle class set up. So those are highlighted, and that's fine. I'll define those uh, soon uh, for this. Um, and then I scroll down, and then there's a system out print line. And again, if they, I think mentioned in the earlier things, this is redone with a council.write line. So I'm going to redo, copy and paste this, just redo these to council dot right line and right line is capital uh, W and capital L uh, here unlike print line which is all lowercase so console that so there's three of those print statements here okay so that takes care of that uh, but much of this code is transferring over here pretty fun pretty good again the different main uh, the output the console at right line if you're doing input that has to be a little different also uh, but I'm missing these two classes uh, so that's Let's create those classes uh, for us uh, here. So you could actually go in here and say, as potential fixes, just have it uh, generate a rectangle class in a new file. So that would be a possibility. But I'm just going to do it uh, the old-fashioned way because we're going to do this for number classes. So I'm going to go over to the Solution Explorer here, and I can see my program file here, program.cs. So you're used to seeing like maybe program.java, but this is C sharp, so it's .cs. And again, I'm going to right-click up here on this folder. Uh, here and I'm going to go down to add and then it says new item here. I'm sorry that's off the screen but I'm going to go to where it says new item uh, here and then click on that. And it'll ask uh, me to declare a new uh, class by default and if not make sure you have class selected here. So class uh, here and I'm just going to create a and again I'm, just made, I'm going to look uh, here at my NetBeans project and let's create the rectangle class. So that's my rectangle class here. So I'm just going to go back here and where I'm creating that class, just call it rectangle, same spelling here. And add that class in. So I'll add that class in. I'm going to add in the triangle class at the same time since I'm doing this. So here's my triangle class. Uh, again, right click on here, uh, do um, add, and then it says new item here and it'll bring up my new item thing class should be selected by default and I'm just gonna do create a triangle class and add that in here okay so I can see over here I've got my program my rectangle and triangle uh, here and I can edit all of them now I'm gonna jump back and forth between uh, the old net beans here's my net beans with my triangle class now one thing I'll notice that in Java we had a package and it had just the package name up here, but then there's a semicolon, not any brackets. When I go over here, I see the package. Oh, we don't have packages, we have namespace. So we have a namespace here and it has brackets. So there's an extra set of brackets in C sharp for the namespace than there is in Java. So just have to be aware of that. So let's go, um, let's open up my triangle class since that's the one open there. And so I'm gonna grab this whole class in here, the public triangle, grab that and paste that in and oops um where's my triangle class here oops uh, okay i'm going to take this class delete it and replace it with this new class so i'm just going to take the java code and paste it right over there okay now i see a number of errors uh and i'm going to want to handle those so the first thing is at extend the way um uh c sharp handles inheritance we don't say extend we just do a semicolon uh, there so just triangle extends shape uh, here uh, and I'm gonna get rid of this override uh, for now and just hide that so and again this area height and width those are all defined in this shape class so maybe I should be defining this shape class first before I go for further and again sometimes it's hard to know what order to do all these things yeah. so I'm gonna build my shape class I think again there's no real perfect way to do this I'm gonna just do my new shape class and here now I'm going to go back and do uh, NetBeans find my uh, find my Java shape class and select that so uh, sorry my cat's helping out a little bit and uh, my neighbor is vacuuming out here so hopefully all this noise is not uh, bothering you too much okay so here's my shape class I'm gonna I'm gonna ignore the package here, and I'm just gonna grab everything uh, in that shape class down to there. Copy that out, 
go into here again replace this shape class which was the default thing I'm going to leave the namespace here because this namespace should be used by all the files in this program should save and that's the name of my kind of project here so I'm going to paste that in there and I'm going to go through and try to uh, fix some of the issues here um, so the the first thing I see is this uh, public abstract class shape that's fine implements whenever I see implements uh, in fact, I'm going to comment out this whole thing here. Uh, and when we're, if we're going to implement a, um, an interface or something like that, we're going to do that. Now, there is no comparable. So, I, again, normally I would maybe just say, uh, put a colon here and say implements comparable shape. But there isn't a comparable uh, in, and again, this is a built-in thing with uh, collections. In, in Java, they have um, a comparable that choose uh, uh, to compare different things. And again, it, there's something similar here. So maybe I'll look in, uh, do some searching, and uh, I'll just Google C Sharp for comparables, and I'll find this I comparable interface, which is used by collection. So if you have a set, an array of objects, how do you compare the different items in that array? Uh, things like that. Uh, and it talks about that. And again, similar to this, returns less than zero, or zero greater than, just like the Java one uh, here. But the way we implement this is it's called the I comparable interface. So again, that's a little different. And again, that's why sometimes with this, you're going to have to watch uh, for um, some differences between um, Java uh, and um, C Sharp. Okay, so um, again, usually C Sharp is uh, really a clone of Java in many ways. So a lot of the times you won't have to do that. But again, sometimes you'll see some things like instead of comparable, it's called I comparable as interface. Okay, and then again, we're going to template this off of shape. Okay, and again, um, there's still a line here because we have to implement this interface. And it might be a little differently. Now in Java, oops, let's switch over to NetBeans. When we implement the comparable uh, thing, we needed a uh, compare to uh, class, public int compare to that re re returns zero, negative one, and plus one. And again, in uh, C sharp, we need that, but it has to be compare to with a capital C and a capital O. Um, so one thing I can do uh, just to kind of see that is I can also go in here, highlight this error, right click on here, and say implement interface uh, here, and it will. Um, add in a uh, code here for compare to and it'll just throw an exception not implemented but this is the what uh, I should be uh, having my program and so this is what's in my program compare to with a lowercase c and this is what it needs to be compared to with uppercase c public int so I'm actually going to uh, get rid of this one uh, that it added in here um, and just change this one to a uh, capital C uh, here. Um, so now um, I've implemented this interface uh, just fine. The, the error has gone away. Now let's see what other errors. So again, we're declaring variables fine, declaring a constructor fine, set height, uh, get height. Now uh, C sharp uh, will let you declare uh, getters and setters like this. It also has a special thing called entities, uh, which will kind of hide these. But um, since we're just moving over from Java and used to do, doing getters or setters, that's fine. Now, I get down to this override. And override is uh, not uh, uh, is not spell done this way. It's a lowercase o here uh, and not an at sign. But also, we don't um, necessarily um, have to override two strings. So in uh, Java, uh, when we do comparables, it requires a two string and a comparable uh, override. These two have to be overrided. But in C sharp, you can certainly have a, a two string, but you don't have to override it at all. So I can just get rid of that uh, and declare a two string. Now, this is our actual override here. And again, in um, C sharp, uh, you uh, we don't say at override with a capital O, we just say override with a lowercase uh, for this. So, um, 
Okay, and when, but when I have override here, it still says in here that uh, shape compared to no suitable method found for override. And again, uh, we're not uh, in uh, C sharp uh, compared to is not done with inheritance with override, but is actually done with an interface. And so that's why it's I comparable. It, it's done with interface. And with interfaces, we don't do overrides uh, here. So actually, I don't need that at all uh, since it's an interface. Okay. And again, one of the reasons I chose this a little more complicated example is because uh, if, if we didn't do have overrides or anything like this, all the Java would just copy over and there would be actually no changes. So I've tried to choose a suitably, ex uh, some complicated example which actually has some changes to it. So, and uh, this is a good example of that. Okay, so now we have this uh, built and it compiles fine. Uh, for that. Okay, so then let's go back to triangle, which we're doing. And again, I see a little star up here. It means I haven't saved this. I'm going to hit control S, go to triangle, and hit control S uh, here. So here's um, uh, triangle. And again, now it says that um, it, it's not implementing the abstract member shape calculate area here. Uh, and again, it, it's looking at this. So if I look under shape, um, there's an abstract class calculate area uh, here um, and what it's wanting to do is uh, it's get worried about a, a rule violation it's giving me a warning that uh, these words must begin with an uppercase letter calculate area uh, here so it's wanting this to be a calculate area uh, here and same over here this it wants to be a calculate area for that to be uh, right. Um, but these naming rules that are these warnings in here, those are just warnings. So I'm actually going to stick with just the Java convention. So I'm going to just do this uh, the way we had it with the lowercase uh, c and not follow. So there would be, there might be a naming convention rule here uh, and there's fixes for that. But I'm just sort of going to ignore some of these warnings uh, because we're just bringing a Java program over here. Now, but the problem is, is that uh, we're still saying that this, uh, now we are using inheritance and we do need override and we, we commented it out here. And so that's why we're having some problems here. So I'm going to make sure I just put in a an override here. And again, it should, it can just be written override um, all lowercase here uh, for this. So similarly, when we go to rectangle, I'm going to go back to our C, uh, our uh, class for rectangle. Uh, I'm going to grab that class. And again, now this should be pretty straightforward here. Uh, go to my rectangle class, just copy it in here, paste it in. Where it says extend, I'm going to replace that with a colon and uh, to do that. And where it says override, I'm just going to replace that uh, with a lowercase o and no at sign uh, for that. And that clears up the whole inheritance uh, here. Um, now, one thing I noticed is that when they're pasting these, sometimes this, uh, my formatting gets uh, screwed up a little bit. And so I, I could manually go through this, but under edit, um, advanced, oops, uh, let's see, edit, um, there, advanced, there should be a format document which will reset all that. It's, I think, control K also uh, for that, which will reset all my formatting, well, all my indents and stuff properly. Similar here, this is not quite right. Um, so again, I can go to edit, um, advanced, uh, control K to reset that. Okay, so we have our triangle class now and our thing. Um, one other thing I'll just mention is that we, you can certainly write it this way, override public in C sharp. It's often written public override, oops, uh, let's see if I can copy paste correctly cut that out and paste it in here. It's often written public override void. It's just a, so you can do it either way. Java people tend to write it, override that, but uh, this is a more common way of writing it in C sharp. Uh, but again, like the triangle one still works fine with it written up there uh, for this. Okay. So now let's see if uh, we're doing, we've got our 
our two uh, shape classes, triangle and rectangle. We've got our actual shape class itself uh, that goes with our child class, and there's no errors there. And I have my program class uh, here, and there's nothing. Everything seems to be fine there. So now I'm going to run my program. I go to the program file here, and I'm just going to hit the play button here, the go button. Uh, and run it and it's going to compile and it says there are build errors do you want to continue and again whenever you get these build errors you should say you should not continue say no and you should look at what those errors are and again often you get a whole sequence of errors you should scroll up to the top one because that's usually the first one in your list and the most important one and here it says rectangle does not contain a definition of a compared to or accessible stuff so I'm going to go back to my main program here now and again often if I click on on that it'll jump to that line here. Oops, and now it's highlighted this rectangle dot compare to uh, for this. And now because we did some in, uh, implementation of compare to with iComparable here and some of the interface here, uh, this doesn't quite work the way it should. And again, sometimes there are just these subtle changes with uh, interfaces and uh, inheritance and stuff like that with C Sharp and Java that are slightly different. Uh, here, so let's just I'll just show you what the problem is here, and we can fix it. In this problem, we're declaring. Uh, well, I'm going to go back here and point out the what is, seems to be almost a problem in Java is that we're declaring a rectangle object here and a triangle object here, uh, and not shape objects. These should really be declared as shape objects. And so when we're calling uh, compare here, compare to is defined in the shape class, which is the parent class here. Uh, for this. And Java will currently let you get by with that, but C Sharp won't. So here we're declaring these, uh, uh, these should be shape objects that we're comparing, and the constructor should be the specific child class, like new rectangle or new triangle, but the objects themselves should be shape classes. So this should be a shape uh, uh, object, and this should be a shape uh, object. Uh, here and once we have that shape, because the compare to is the defined inside the shape uh, class. Compare to is defined in there, and so you really don't get inheritance unless you set it up that way. So now, once we've got that set um, uh, here, uh, and then uh, hopefully when we build this, the compare to will go away. Um, let me see. Oh, and again, we're using a capital compare to because of the interface here. So we have to switch this to the same thing. Capital compare to here and here. And now when we run this, uh, this will work uh, here. Okay, so we just compare, we, it pops up a, a new window for the display and it says hello world and then rectangle is greater than triangle. Now the hello world uh, is actually a leftover from our first program so I can actually delete that or comment out that. We don't need that uh, in here. Uh, but this is the, the requirement um, here. Oh, and again, um, as I mentioned, uh, I'm going to switch this back because I made a mistake earlier and explained to you that you had to have these as shape classes, but you can have these as the base class here, just like this. Uh, okay. So now your program should work uh, fine uh, here um, with your rectangle and uh, triangle classes. So the next thing we want to do is just go through and do the rest of the classes. So we've done uh, the shape tester, triangle, rectangle, and shape. Um, the other main program is this shape inheritance class. Uh, so again, you might want to go there uh, and again, go in here and create a new, uh, go add, uh, new item, uh, class should be selected and just do that uh, here. Add that class uh, here. And again, you should then just take uh, this uh, public class, this shape inheritance class, and do it. Now, one thing you have to watch is this main class is a little different uh, for that. So I'm going to take this class, um, copy it, and not overwrite this class right away. Um, I'm going to, well, yeah, that's, uh, I'm going to put it right inside this class and write this, put this right in there. Now, just like before, um, we've got to watch with our 
uh, system.out.print lines should be all console.write lines. And so we can go through and just modify all those. Now where there's a system.out.print instead of a print line, again we do a we can do a write and not a write line uh, for that. Uh, so we have both a print and a uh, console that print and a uh, write and write line, just like the print and print line here. So I'm going to switch these to just say write uh, for these. Uh, so. Um, and then also with our our main object here, um, we've got to change that. So I'm going to actually go back to our main program and see how that's uh, set up. We do a static void. I'm just going to copy that and change this uh, to match that setup here so that the main is set up the same way. Now if I'm looking at some of the other errors, now I'm getting these errors where my variable declaration is here and um, the problem here is with the final. Uh, we don't have it. So I've actually go, you know, if I go here and Google just C-sharp final variable, it says uh, there's a couple ways of doing it. The most common way is to use this read-only keyword here. So rather than saying final, oops, clicked on the wrong spot, we would do read-only. Uh, so if I switch that, these variables all are fixed. Um, and then this works out okay. Now let's look at array lists and how array lists will work. Um, so with an array list, yes, with the array lists in uh, C sharp, we usually just use the list uh, is kind of this equivalent. So rather than saying array list, we'll just say list uh, and same here. And then the syntax should be basically the same once that is set up uh, for this. Now for for scanners for the input uh, system here, we don't need to declare a scanner object, uh, but we do need to change where we're actually reading these. So we do like input that next int. I'm going to switch back to this thing. So where we were doing like console dot next input, we want to just do a console dot read line, and we want to convert that to like an integer uh, here. So I'm just going to grab that statement put it over here so we can see what that will look like. So it, when we're getting a new input uh, thing we're just going to say console.readline that will read a line of string here but then we want to convert that to an integer so then we have to say convert to int 32 our 32 bit integer for that. So it's a little weird and again in general you don't do a whole lot of console input and outputs in real programming here so this is a little strange. Uh, and so once I have that I can just replace all these uh, int inputs with those uh, statements. Okay, so my if then is is uh, the same. All this stuff is now. I haven't declared eclipse, uh, ellipse, and circle yet. So again, I should go through and and copy those uh, variables over here. And again, the way I do my print uh, here is going to be different here. So, um, so I'm going to uh, just quickly do those, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, this uh, the size of an array. Okay, so I've added the uh, e e ellipse and the circle class here. Let's see what other errors. So we're going to run into some issues with the um, arrays or lists here that are just kind of subtle. So like when we add things, we can just say dot .add in uh, Java. It's a capital A uh, for uh, that uh, method in C sharp. So it has to be shapes. So I'm adding this new shape we created to our list or our array list, and I have to, it, which is called shapes. So I say shapes dot capital A add, uh, and then add that shape to the shapes array or list uh, here. Um, similarly, um, when I'm looking through the size of an array, uh, here I have my for length. Uh, so rather than size, I believe. Let me think. I think it's dot length. Um, Um, it looks like it's when I'm bringing up length, it's not auto filling. So I'm going to try. I googled it. It's dot count, right? Uh, shapes dot count there uh, for that. So that's um, my uh, 
rather than doing a uh, size, it's dot count for a list of things uh, for that. Now, again, when we're indexing into an array uh, in Java, you had to say shapes.get.index. Uh, here, the lists are very similar to an actual array. Uh, we just put our square bracket here to index into it uh, for that. Okay. Um, here they're they're doing also a string ignore case and again there's lots of stuff in uh, C sharp where it's just a slightly different um, case or capitalization so if I do that string dot uh, um, and I do like ignore um, But in this case, I don't see uh, ignore case or whatever. And in fact, uh, Windows and C Sharp in general uh, make this more complicated where they have, because the different languages uh, do different things as far as the case goes and what letters they can do. So you have to do a cultural sensitive uh, language, uh, in cultural invariant uh, that. So we're just going to change this to just, um, we'll just do another alternative to this and we'll just say switch this to lower case. Uh, here, so ch switch it to lowercase and see if it represents that um, here, uh, or again to lower. In our so and then to lower will actually uh, just make that lowercase and then we can just do the equal sign to do that oops uh to do uh yes here and again maybe they entered the lowercase thing so again that two lower and then we'll just say equals y okay so that should work there. Let's see if there are any other problems. Again we're we're doing a size here and again that is a dot count for our index and then again when we're using get it with the index we just do a square bracket uh, for this so again there's some subtle differences between C sharp and uh, Java uh, but a lot of them are are very similar uh, here comes one where we're again we're sorting things and in Java you have to say collections that sort and then the name of the array uh, and let's just copy that and show you what we do in C sharp. In C sharp, we just say the array name and then dot uh, sort, and that will sort the array. Uh, so this is the Java way, and this is the C sharp way of sorting that array. So, um, so once I get this all uh, fixed. Um, I do run into one more problem when I run this. When I run this, I get this error, and the error is that uh, the program has more than one entry point uh, compiling with uh, two main programs. So I have two programs. I have my um, this uh, new shape solution that I added, which has a main program, and this program uh, has a main. And it doesn't like uh, that. It only it, what it's going to go is look through all these and find the main program and run that uh, here. So I'm actually going to switch back to this program one and call this main two, uh, so that there's just a different name to it. And then this will be the main name, and I should be able to run this uh, for this. And now I should be able to step through this interface and let me create different uh, things like a triangle uh, and enter information about that triangle and ask if I want to create another shape and then create you know just do this interface here and it should work so okay that's your basic introduction uh, comparing uh, C sharp to Java I tried to pick a kind of complicated example here that uh, does a lot of difference now one thing I will point out uh, here is that if you uh, will be doing some slightly different programming where um, there wouldn't be as many changes. So again, in most programming uh, 
situations now, like with a, a list and you're looping through all items in the list, you'd never use a for and an index here. You'd use a for each statement. I don't know how much you've seen of for each statements, but we'll be using those all the time in this class. And in those, uh, again, you don't have to worry about the count and you don't have to worry about the index. Uh, the for each statement will take care of that. So a lot of these changes are, are here also because we're just kind of doing some uh, real basic Java programming rather than using some of the more um, standard approaches uh, to programming. So, okay, once you've got this, uh, you should save your project uh, here and then you can close it up. And then you have to find that project. So again, if I just go into my documents folder, it's it doesn't show up uh, here. It I actually, uh, in Windows, I have to go to this PC, go to the C drive, and then go to my drive users uh, T Gibbons, and then it will be under our source file here in the same place where documents or downloads are. Uh, there's a source file, and so I often set up and store this, make a new folder inside documents and store it there. But if you didn't, it's in this source folder in repos. And here's my different projects uh, here. And then this is the newest one I've just created. And so I should zip that up. I can just say uh, send to zip file uh, here. Maybe you can't see that. Um, uh, but well, whatever. Right click and go down to send a zip file and it would create one of these zip files, which I can then submit into Brightspace for that. Okay. That's your uh, task uh, for this. Uh, hope you enjoyed this activity.